Today we're going to talk about cutting circles. Lots of circles. What's going on everybody? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today I want to talk about my circle cutting jig for the bandsaw. Now, I watched a lot of videos and read a lot of articles on how to build a bandsaw circle cutting jig. A lot of them have a slide that comes in and out of the jig on this side and it has an adjustment knob underneath. Um, I wasn't a really big fan of that. I also wasn't a big fan of the fact that most of the time you need to put a dowel or a pin in the bottom of your workpiece. Now, a lot of times you can hide that, especially if it's a tabletop or something, but there's times where you don't want that, say a cutting board that you wanna be able to use both sides on. So I wanted to make a circle cutting jig um, where we'd have minimal tear out, it'd be fully adjustable, and we wouldn't have to put any distinguishing marks or holes in the piece. So that's what I set out to do. Hopefully this will do some of you guys some good as well. So to start, I needed to cut a runner for inside this track on my table. Uh, so to do that, I went ahead and measured this track uh, to get the right height and width and everything. I wanted to make a full T for this channel. So using a planer, a table saw, and a router, I went ahead and snuck up on the right dimensions. I got a pretty close fit overall. I was just looking for it to be fairly tight, but yet still smooth, not too loose, so it wasn't falling out of there. I cut the base of this out of plywood on the table saw. I measured over nine inches on that piece. I used super glue and wood glue. You might have seen it in past videos. I use wood glue pretty much in the field. I use super glue on the ends and maybe somewhere in the middle. Uh, the super glue acts as a clamp, the wood glue acts as a more permanent bond. So once I got that locked down, I went ahead and ran over and made my first cut. Problem is, I got distracted and I accidentally cut it on the wrong side. Uh, no big deal, I went ahead and flipped it over and cut it on the correct side. Now I just cut it until I just barely got that back edge flush with the back of the table. And then I went ahead and marked where I would put a stop. And using some of that scrap maple that I used for the runners, I went ahead and glued a stop on the back of this. So now when I run the jig on the table into the blade, it'll have a positive stop where it won't go any farther into the blade. So next I set up a line where I'd run a dovetail perpendicular to the path of the blade. It's really important to make sure that the center of that dovetail is at the very front of the teeth on that blade or else you're gonna have problems with alignment, your blade's gonna run on the bearings, it's gonna give you goofy measurements. So it's really important to get that center line. Now I ran mine all the way up to the blade itself and then I cleaned up that track with a little bit of sandpaper. Now the adjustable pivot knob is homemade. I took a piece of dowel and drilled a hole down the center of it to start. I made a separate video on how to get a hole perfectly in the center of a dowel. It's like a 30 second video. I'll link it at the end in, in the description. But I drilled down the center of it and that's where I would be able to put a screw in here, which would be the clamping mechanism. I set the nut inside the track and then screwed it down and you can see where the nut will pull up and grip onto the inside of that dovetail. Now I just used a five minute epoxy, uh, stirred it up really well and put it in there and that's what's gonna hold the screw into that knob. The next step is just to take a piece of scrap plywood, find the center of it and drill an inch and five eighths hole in it which is the same size as the dowel and that's what we're gonna use to make the donut. Now I made a pretty tight circle on this. I took that scrap piece that I had left over and I cut the top half off of it and then I trimmed up the side so that all I had left was just the upper part of the circle that I had made. So I set the adjustment knob to pretty close to the tightest circle I think I would probably be making. This other piece serves as a couple different purposes. One, it's the zero clearance fence uh, for the jig. So it's gonna eliminate or partially eliminate tear out. And it also acts as a stop so that you can't make your adjustment knob go too far down. So I'm using double side tape on this to fasten it down and the idea is, is that if I need to replace that as the saw blade wears it out, I can easily do that. So once I had that in place, I made sure that the donut was able to pass through on its track perfectly well and I marked out lines as to where I would put the top sheets of the table on. And then I just cut plywood pieces that would fit on either side of that and create a channel for that donut to travel. I just used the same thing, wood glue and super glue and I've cut a million circles on this thing since recording and it's worked really, really well. So once I had that all secure, I brought it back to the table saw and made my final cut into that top layer. I went ahead and darkened up the crosshairs on the donut just to make it a little bit easier to find 
marks and line stuff up. And then went ahead and cut some larger squares and this is where I would test out not only how well it works but to try and get some measurements laid out. So to fasten the donut down we're just going to use double sided tape. We're going to cut the excess tape off of there so it doesn't grip to the table itself and that's what's going to secure our cut piece to the jig. So then you can just run it through and then slowly start turning. Just like with any other jig, you just don't have a dowel pin there to lock it in place. I wanted to get fancy on this jig, so I ran a couple test pieces to start making measurements where I could mark the measurements on the jig itself. And once I got consistent, I came through and I made a mark at a half inch from those measurements and that would tell me that that would be a full inch for a diameter. I didn't show it on camera, but later on I would come through and I would put marks in between each of those which would give me half inch measurements. I went through and I sanded the whole thing down, top, bottom, and all the sides. That's just obviously to clean it up, but it's also so that anything you cut isn't going to hang up on any of the surfaces. And then I took some paste wax and I went ahead and lubed the whole thing up all over it, especially deep down inside the groove, anywhere where there's gonna be sliding parts. So again, we just put double face tape on the back side of that donut. We cut away the excess. We set our adjustment knob for the diameter of what we're trying to achieve, and then you can just set it on there, push it in, and just cut your circle. Now, I'm actually using this and cutting circles um, for a custom shop stool that I have coming up, which is gonna be a series of plywood rings and solid rounds that are gonna be stacked on top of each other. It'll end up being in the shape of an hourglass. So I really needed to make this jig in order to make that work. And so far it's worked great. I've cut 30, there's 31 layers in the shop stool itself, and each one of those layers ends up being a different size and it's cut at the same spot consistently the whole way through. So I'm super, super happy with this. It does tend to rock a little bit. Anything closer to to the blade, say about 12, maybe even 20 inches or so, probably isn't gonna be too big of a deal because all the weight's gonna be located at the blade. Once you start getting past the table though, the only real problem is gonna be that it's not gonna cut here at a 90 degree angle. If I was gonna cut a larger diameter, I think I can cut up to about 40, 41 inches on here. And if I was gonna do that, I would put something underneath here and block this up just to keep it from being able to, to rock around. I think that about wraps it up. I can't think of anything else that I would change to this thing. Like I say, we have very minimal tear out. We have a very clean surface. We have no holes drilled in here for a peg or a nail or a pivot point of any sort. Yeah, so all in all, I think uh, this thing turned out pretty good. Let me know if you attempt this or if you could think of any way you would alter it. I do have that shop stool video coming out pretty soon, so if this did you any good, it'd be greatly appreciated if you liked and subscribed and then hit that notification bell, and that'll tell you when that build video comes out, which hopefully will be here in another week. Other than that, thanks for the love and support as always, and I will catch you guys in the next video.